Good afternoon. I'm very, very happy to be here. I guess you don't know why. Uh, me and Patricio, we were, along with Inés and other colleagues in the organization of the previous, um, previous what? Conference. The conferences, uh, FIS Europe and CIS Europe. Uh, so uh, we are very happy to be here and uh, glad that the conference is taking a good um, way. Um, so thank you for the invitation to present our scientific blog. What, what is this blog about? This blog is not, it's a, a, a network, a scientific network blog, but this network didn't, uh, um, was not born with, uh, the blog was not born, the, the, the network and the blog are not uh, contemporary. The network began before, long before the blog. The, net, the network began early in at least the late, well, the early 2000s uh, with a project, uh, the project Street, which is this that Patricia is showing on the blog. Um, uh, and it was, uh, uh, there, there was this um, relationship between the, some Portuguese uh, researchers in urban anthropology and in Brazil and uh, along with other countries, but the, 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 the greatest relationship, scientific relationship on urban anthropology was with Brazil, along with, uh, uh, this is Professor Gilberto Velho, um, and uh, Graça Cordeiro, she is like a, a, the, one of the, the, the central professors in Portugal uh, who is, uh, uh, um, well, with what she, well, she's uh, one of the central persons uh, in urban anthropology and in urban ethnography. And uh, uh, then some, after the, the Projeto Rua, there was the, the two conferences before this one, FIS Urb and CIS Urb. Um, and uh, uh, these conferences were, of course, very important to establish this network because many people came from many uh, countries. There was actually uh, an article uh, wrote for, uh, by a, a, a Brazilian um, <coughs> researcher, Freya Freze, she came to the conference in 2007, and then she wrote a very nice article about the conference at the Ponto Urb Journal in uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, and uh, in 2011, there was the second, uh, second International Conference of Urban uh, Researchers, and there was, uh, again, 130 researchers, more or less, from a lot of countries, and again, it was very important to, uh, to, to make this, these relationships deeper um, between, and one of the issues is, uh, is about the, one of the, 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 the strengths of this network is the relationship between older and uh, young, young people. Um, so this is to say that before the blog, the blog is like one year or six months, more or less. Well, actually in the, the last three months, we are uh, with more uh, application to this, but the network is long uh, has uh, a long living uh, with projects along the, the, the line and these uh, big conferences as well. So, uh, Professor Graça Cordeiro, along with Ligia Ferro, she was also one of the organizers of FIS Urb and CIS Urb, they decided two years ago to promote this network at the, the research center CIES. Uh, uh, and uh, they thought about making a scientific blog. So from then on, we slowly we began to do this because uh, in the meanwhile, there, there are many projects uh, uh, along the way. We have our own projects, our team projects. There, there is also the Cidades em Mudança projects. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, um, and, uh, and as I was saying, only recently we dedicated uh, uh, our work to, to, to the blog. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what else?
else can I say? I prepared this in Portuguese, I'm sorry for, for this. Um, and uh, this blog is in Hypothèse, as you can see. Hypothèse is a very big uh, uh, site <laughs> with many, many scientific blogs and uh, it's in open access. So Patricio will now uh, present the, 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 the overall of the, the, the blog. Okay, thank you. Hello, can you see me from back here? Okay, so uh, I am Patricia Pereira. I'm also uh, one of the editors of this, this blog uh, from the network Ethnourb. It's our network in urban ethnography. And it's one of the things that I find more, most interesting about this network is that this is an interdisciplinary network. We have anthropologists like Rita and sociologists like me and uh, people from other backgrounds. But we all have this interest in common, which is uh, urban ethnography. And this is what our blog is all about. So we have uh, several, uh, the blog is in Portuguese. So we try to maintain uh, this idea of uh, counteracting uh, the hegemony of English in, uh, in research. And so we also try to do this in these conferences, in these uh, young urban researchers conferences, where in the first, the second, and also now in the third, we gave people the opportunity to speak in other ling languages than English. And this is really important for me also. So uh, about the blog specifically, we have this section, of course, where we present the partners uh, of the network. Rita already told you about uh, people from several universities in Portugal, in Spain, and also in Brazil, very important, our Brazilian partners. Then we have this section where we post, we try to post uh, the um, publications, the articles and books that people from the network publish. So we have more recent publications, and but we also have some older publications that uh, we find that were very, very important to the establishment and development of the network, like this book, Ethnographias Urbanas, where some of the people who are here and who are still working in uh, urban ethnography uh, published, for instance, their first article. I think, Ines, you published your first article here? Yeah, so. One of the first. <laughs> One of the first. So this is very... Uh, we try to, to put this history of urban ethnography and of the network in the blog. Okay? So then we have another field where we put the pre projects of the network, the ones who are all finished and the ones who are still ongoing. Then we have uh, something called events, where we put also events from the network. And I would like to tell you about one event, one series of events that will start in September, which we posted here. Is we want to promote uh, readings of uh, classic books in urban ethnography and also of new books or new articles interesting that we uh, think are important for uh, thinking about this method, this approach to research. So what we want to do is uh, pick someone in the network picks uh, a book or uh, an article and we will read it together and discuss it in one session. And we want to do this monthly starting in September and we already have uh, the first book picked up and it's Utopia Urbana by um, Gilbert Vell. And it's very also important for us that this is the first book that we will discuss. And hmm, then we have uh, all the posts of the blog, we decided to call them field notes, like the things that will happen, the posts that are more important, we put them here because this is what is happening right now. And then we have the other section, which is the library, where we put fundamental uh, texts, fundamental books in urban ethnography that we can find online. So this is a way for us also to share knowledge about urban ethnography. Uh, and I think this is all, and thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, um, Patricia and Rita. So now we will have a collective LIL, an urban studies lab that has now just begun its activities. So, um, first of all, uh, I would like to apologize for not making the presentation in English, but I will talk much uh, quicker in Portuguese, and the presentation is in English, the text of the presentation. So I can answer the questions in the end in English, and you can make it in English. Um, so we are both presenting the, 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 the urban studies lab, um, and uh, we didn't have the name because we didn't decide that uh, before who was going to make uh, the presentation. We decided it today, uh, and that's why it is like that. I'm Irina, uh, I'm architect, uh, and um, Oscar, Oscar I'm is, uh, is from Economy. Um, so, uh, I will start now the Portuguese presentation. Um, então, <laughs> mudar uh, o, o chip. Um, o laboratório é uma ideia muito, muito recente, uh, pelo menos enquanto uh, uma entidade tem uma, uma, uma forma. Na verdade, começou com um grupo de estudantes do doutoramento em estudos urbanos. Uh, éramos mais uh, na turma. Depois, três avançaram de forma mais consistente com esta ideia que vos vamos apresentar agora. E, mais recentemente, temos um grupo uh, já com dez pessoas de forma mais uh, regular. Um, e pronto, e é sobre isso que eu vos vou falar. Uh, é um coletivo completamente experimental, informal, uh, que visa a interdisciplinaridade e a investigação um, um bocadinho num registro alternativo àquele que é uh, o registro académico uh, tradicional. É sobre isso que vos vamos falar, vamos mostrar aqui algumas fotografias e alguns princípios base que estão completamente em transformação. A ideia base é, ou as palavras-chave quase que são interdisciplinaridade e uh, experimental. São estes uh, os nossos objetivos principais. Um, é uma plataforma que está aberta a todas as pessoas, estudantes ou não, um, do ISCT, fora do ISCT, uh, de Portugal ou fora de Portugal, é mesmo o mais aberta possível. Uh, não estamos aqui com grandes formalismos, talvez isto mude, mas para já uh, é esta a nossa ideia, que está a ser trabalhada com o grupo. Uh, temos aqui um, como visão base um, um foco em duas questões, que têm a ver com a experimentação de metodologias, portanto também não queremos fazer isto uh, de uma forma completamente... Uh, Aleatória. O objetivo é que nos organizemos enquanto grupo dentro deste tema dos estudos urbanos, que é tão, um, tão interdisciplinar. Um, e, portanto, queremos começar a trabalhar com metodologias, que vamos experimentar, vamos ver o que é que resulta com as pessoas que decidem integrar este grupo e uh, o que é que não funciona. E vamos afinando o processo, uh, sobre o qual o Oscar depois vai falar um bocadinho mais. Um, lá está, tudo isto vai ser feito de uma forma experimental e uh, quem quiser juntar-se a nós é sempre bem-vindo. Isto foi a primeira reunião de divulgação da ideia, onde nós uh, constituímos o grupo de forma mais alargada. Eu já vou, já vou explicar um bocadinho melhor como é que chegamos a este grupo, mas isto era para conhecerem um bocadinho as pessoas que também estão aqui. Um, e uh, explicar porque é que surgiu a necessidade de criarmos este grupo. 
uh, enquanto alunos de doutoramento, mas não só, também antes de sermos alunos de doutoramento, eu pelo menos falo por mim, uh, tínhamos estas dúvidas. Eu tenho uma questão com quem eu, sobre a qual eu gostaria de debater com mais pessoas, mas com quem é que eu a vou debater? Uh, há um certo nível de profundidade dessa discussão que tem um limite com os nossos amigos. E, portanto, uh, nós propomos este tema em comum, que é suficientemente abrangente para chamar pessoas com vários interesses, mas com um uh, princípio comum, que é a questão de, dos estudos urbanos. Uh, também para ganhar certas competências, achámos que este era o lugar certo, porque há aqui, lá está, eu sou arquiteta, o Oscar é uh, de economia, eu sei ferramentas de imagem, ele há de saber ferramentas de tratamento de dados, etc. E se calhar podemos aprender uns com os outros e juntarmos em função dos interesses de aprendizagem. Ou se quisermos ler um livro e ter diferentes perspectivas disciplinares também sobre ele, por exemplo, é para isso que serve o Lab. Um, temos aqui algumas ideias de atividades, isto é uma... É uma pedra para partir completamente. Foi uma primeira proposta do primeiro grupo de três pessoas, que neste momento já está em completa transformação. Um, mas o, o objetivo seria realmente promovermos parcerias, termos conversas temáticas, promover a autonomia através do ganho de competências e uh, registar esse processo. Essencialmente era nisso que consistia a ideia do laboratório. Um, pronto, aqui explicamos um bocadinho como é que chegámos uh, ao dia em que estamos hoje que é a fase 6, ou estamos entre a 5 e a 6, na verdade. Em 2016 foi quando integrámos o programa de doutoramento, em 2017 andámos a estruturar a ideia, e no início de 2018, que é aquela imagem ali, um, divulgámos a ideia e juntámos as pessoas que, que agora aqui estão presentes, mas que também fazem parte da rede e que hoje não conseguiram estar presentes. Organizámos-nos por interesses, é isso que mostra na imagem 4, e estamos depois um, a decidir o que é que vamos fazer e que grupos de trabalho é que vão ser constituídos, é o que mostra a imagem 6. Isto é só um documento de trabalho, foi a última reunião que nós tivemos, um, em que também, para além da, da parte dos grupos de trabalho e do, daquilo que nos levou a, a juntar, também percebemos que temos tarefas para, para tornar isto uma coisa mais concreta e mais útil a todos, nomeadamente procurar um espaço, se calhar formalizar o website um, e outras ideias, ter uma carta de princípios também era uma ideia que queríamos ter e organizamos-nos por, pronto, as pessoas disseram o que é que preferiam integrar, grupos é que preferiam integrar e geralmente uh, tentamos pelo menos ter duas pessoas para avançar com essa tarefa para não ser um trabalho solitário. Isto uh, foi um pequeno grupo de trabalho que foi formado para preparar esta apresentação. <risos> uh, e pronto, e, e é um bocadinho isso que, que está aqui registado. Um, temos um, realmente estes objetivos, que deverão ser transversais a todos os grupos de trabalho. A comunicação uh, deverá ser sempre um, uma ideia muito importante em todos eles, a reflexão sobre esse processo de investigação e, uh, lá está, testar as abordagens que, que queremos, uh, queremos, testar, queremos experimentar. Uh, o objetivo é realmente o registro deste processo. Há espaço para falhar, experimenta uma vez, corre mal, experimenta outra vez, corre melhor ou corre pior, mas uh, pelo menos fica registado para não voltarmos a cometer esse mesmo erro. Um, e agora o Oscar vai falar sobre esta ideia que está em maturação e que vai substituir a tal pedra que estava a ser partida uh, para se transformar em qualquer coisa mais concreta e mais coletiva, principalmente. Olá. Eh, Olá a todos. Primeiramente, de, desculpa em relação ao português. Eh, vou tentar falar o mais devagar possível. Mas eh, pronto, eu estou no grupo de trabalho da criação, digamos, do roadmap, o que seria um planeamento estratégico de desenvolvimento deste coletivo. Esta é a proposta final que vou tentar apresentar com o objetivo de tentar concretizar um bocado que tento falar ela. Eh, dividimos no primeiro ano, este é um projeto a três anos, digamos, em três etapas. Eh, quando vemos a primeira apresentação, eh, desde o começo, esses passos de formação de, de uma ideia de três pessoas que pesquisam novas pessoas, se criam redes, se conformam redes, grupos de trabalho, é de aí onde está a essência da criação deste roadmap. Em relação a que este coletivo vai se enfrentar sempre a as parcerias, as novas colaborações, a pessoas que queiram partilhar ou participar nas atividades que estejam a desenvolver. Ante isso também, isso vai a mudar e a criar, eh, a mudar e a ter umas repercussões na sua própria identidade, no seu trabalho. Agora, neste primeiro processo, eh, nessas primeiras reuniões, uma das questões que mais se causa ativo foi se queríamos ter um espaço próprio como coletivo ou não. 
Al final, parece que a Zizau é que sí, estamos nesa pesquisa. Neste momento que estamos a definirnos como grupo, acho que a seguinte reunión, reunión é un bocado a ideia, de facto, de identificarnos como grupo. Percebí que había como unhas, bueno, percebimos que había como unhas diferentes dimensóis entre a Zizau e a Misau que este grupo podría ter. Que é esa boca Zizau que podía ser nacional ou internacional, ou formal ou informal, en relación a se nos vamos a conformar como asociación ou como un simple colectivo, ou tamén a intensidade na experimentalización. É dicir, se vamos a experimentar con diferentes metodologías de trabalho nos nosos grupos, tamén se vamos a experimentar ao mesmo tempo con a forma o contido das nosas propostas, é un bocado o que sigue en debate. Nesta primeira etapa, que van estes primeiros meses até setembre, a ideia é encontrar ese espaxo, pensarse como vai ser a nosa forma, pensar como vamos a presentar ese conceito de experimentalización e encontrar ese lugar. Por agora, unha posta en práctica todo isto foi a creación de grupos de trabalho entre as aves esses diferentes tópicos, compartimos estas conversas, estes debates e seguimos a traballar en conjunto en relación a todos estes tópicos. Máis adiante, esas actividades que verían a ser, pois, tanto a creación de workshops, desculpa, a creación de workshops, debates, clubes de leitura, propostas de traballo, tamén podría ser, digamos, propostas de traballo sentra da SAO a propia sociedade civil que esteia perto dese espaso que vamos a escoller. Van a definir a nosa identidade ou ese desdobramento que estamos a ter en relación ao tempo que vai a recorrer toda a actividade do primeiro ano. Finalmente, Já na última etapa, que seria máis ou menos eses últimos meses até o fin do ano académico, valoremos a nosa atrevedade, mentras podemos seguir a realizar novas actividades deste tipo, valoremos en relación a esas novas conexóis que hemos criado con outras persoas ou con outros lugares, como vai a definirnos novamente para a seguinte etapa. Un bocado estas son as nosas cuestionamentos de partida en relación a este colectivo. Queremos saber como laboratorio pode ayudar ao ámbito académico a prepararnos mellor en relación a estes cambios complexos sociais que está a vivir a sociedade con os desafíos que nos encontramos nestes momentos. En relación a de que forma podes empoderar as persoas dentro de unha forma autónoma en relación a este novo complexo nova situação que vamos encontrar nos nunha nova era onde vai haber outro cambio transformacional como que aconteceu con internet en relación á inteligencia artificial É iso, é obrigado Ok, thank you very much Collective Is it finished? Okay, a round of applause We are behaving very well with our schedule and now we welcome um, Jordi to talk a little bit about El She's Night. And, um, well, uh, I would thank uh, to Manuel and all the organizers for having invited me as principal investigator of Elise Knights to present this uh, research network on nightlife studies. And actually, um, uh, this is um, 
uh, new network uh, that was born uh, beyond the official uh, and academic networks like European Sociological Association or the Royal Geographical Association, I mean, I'm a geographer, and, and, and so on. So um, in July uh, 2014, after a conference here in the Faculty of Geography in the University of Lisbon, they got, uh, um, I decided to create an, an open a blog about uh, uh, nightlife and urban transformation in Lisbon because it's quite interesting, because, but um, I saw some people taking notes and I thought maybe they are robbing that idea. And because in the academy the ideas have no official manner to register the idea, it's quite good to open a blog. And so I would like to congratulate all my colleagues uh, because of the opening of blogs on research because there are uh, some people, and hopefully there are some people in the academy robbing ideas to young researchers, and, and it's not new. Uh, so we, mm, in that time, because uh, we are getting older, <laughs> we are more fortunate, okay. But uh, we meet uh, young researchers and some uh, professor, and we decided to create this, uh, this, um, this research network. Actually, <clears throat> and, oh, okay, it's um, actually it's an, an individual, and uh, it's, it's my individual postdoc that I decided to, um, uh, to share with my, with my colleagues, not only from the Faculty of Social and Sciences of the New University of Lisbon, but from, from this kitty as well, and other universities in Portugal. And um, um, the initial phase of our research was to explore the interplay between some urban processes like gentrification, touristification, and studentification in Lisbon and in particular, the historical neighborhoods of the city center of Lisbon, and nightlife. And um, let me see if there's some way to, uh, like to, you know, no, Ah, okay, okay, ah, okay, come on, okay. And, um, okay, so <clears throat> we decide to, um, uh, because we are uh, geographers, sociologists, anthropologists, uh, and we're interested in some particular areas of research about um, uh, urban transformation in Lisbon by taking the urban night as analytical lens and, um, and case studies simultaneously. So we decided to, um, to open our research and divided them in, into some work package. For example, the social spatial analysis, the exp uh, an explorative ethnography, our policy, a transnational perspective that is, um, for example, mm, how this new nightlife that was born in uh, the past years here in, in the citizen of Lisbon uh, is contributing to, to create a new, a new city, or how, how can explore the, inter the interplay between touristification, studentification, gentrification, so on. Uh, uh, um, uh, to what extent um, um, can we identify social actors and can we examine the different conflicts between these different actors and so on. And for example, um, we, we, we take uh, two main case areas. Uh, there is um, Case de Sodre, uh, former harbor neighborhood in the, uh, in the city center touching the riverfront of the city. And that um, the new uh, process of, of dramatic urban change, uh, especially concentrated in, in a particular street, the Ruan of the Carvalho Street, that was uh, painted in pink in, in late, uh, I think, uh, 2011, I think so. And, but it's interesting because this state-led um, state um, transformation <coughs> presented this area like a creative district, but it's false. It's a former harbor area, it's not a creative district. 
So it's interesting here in that in that red square that they say one of a Carvalho is a pedestrian street located in the neighborhood of a Carvalho Sodre. A creative district focuses both on creative production and consumption is false. It's like to erase, to remove the the past about our working classes, about marginal life, about marginal uh, social classes there, and create a new a new distinguished um, uh, area in the city, and that's. Kaiso Sodre today, that is the most vibrant nightlife spot in the city. But it's not new, it, I mean, uh, the, the way that nightlife or nighttime leisure economy um, has been used in, 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 in many European cities is not new. I mean, it's one way to, re, to revitalize in social and economic terms uh, the city, after, especially after after a hard crisis like the 80s, 90s, and, and today. And for example, this is Cajos uh, Sodre. I mean, it's quite it's quite interesting the expansion of, of nightlife in in the area. Uh, we we have been working there in in Cajos Sodre, as we will see later in the next slides. Uh, we have been examining the uh, the occupation of public space that is. Is involving some some problems regarding the community liability in the area, and uh, it's quite interesting also our um, our our approach to to the urban night as a nocturnal heterotopic uh, leisure scape in Foucaultian or um, or Leferian terms because we are some anthropologists working uh, working with us like Daniel Malet from Iskete, and it's interesting uh, uh, his his approach to the uh, to the urban night you know and but the other, the, the other area is uh, for example Barry Walt that uh, new uh, uh, dramatic urban change uh, since late 90s uh, actually Barry Walt had a lot of like as you say, a lot of problems regarding um, bad conditions of built environment uh, social exclusion social marginalization the ghettoization I mean urban poverty marginal prostitution and, and drug dealing. But here is a, a comparative cartography in the map. And the left map, map is uh, nightlife in the area in Barrio Alto in late, in late 90s. And in the map of the center is uh, today's nightlife, in, <coughs> in, uh, today's nightlife in, in Barrio Alto. So it's quite evident uh, the expansion of nightlife in the area. And Actually, Barrio Alto is a dual escape. We are, uh, we are taking Barrio Alto like a, a dual urban escape. It's very quiet area in, during daytime hours and quite crowded during nighttime hours, especially uh, Rua Talaya. Uh, there it's like, uh, you know, uh, Bourbon Street in New Orleans. So we have uh, here in Lisbon our Bourbon Street, which is Rua Talaya. And there is a very critical uh, new informal economy, informal because we, you don't have a receipt, it's informal, you pay 15 euros and that's all, for free drinks and free entrance in a club. And it's, uh, well, we have here the pop crawl, and it's quite, it's quite complicated, the, the situation in, in Barrio Alto, because not only about pop crawl, but this expansion of youth-oriented, tourist-oriented nightlife in the city center have involved some, some problems, and especially, <coughs> The worsening of community liability in 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 Caso Sur and Barrio Alto. So we decided to to transform the, our research network in a quite well, not that research network, but uh, open the network to uh, to local actors. So uh, we have uh, we have been examining uh, the negative impact, and we have. Uh, talking to social actors of the urban night to how to improve, uh, how, uh, how to um, um, tackle and address these negative impacts and, and, and uh, towards a better, uh, more sustainable, inclusive nightlife in, in, in Lisbon. And we're counting with, uh, with the collaboration of many colleagues from the United States, Canada, Italy, France, um, United Kingdom, uh, even Japan and Australia. We have uh, been participating in some conference. Uh, this uh, Elise Knights is not only based in Lisbon, but is working uh, abroad. Uh, we are working with uh, colleagues from Germany or from the United, uh, United Kingdom in London, for example. 
and we have presented our results here in, in Berlin, in this uh, night's conference, on the OGO, or recently in Sofia, presenting, uh, for example, our last work that is an uh, edited book. It's uh, Exploring Life, Life, Space, Society, and Governance, that is providing a global approach to the urban night um, um, today. And rapidly, we have been working in the Cais de Sodre, some um, you know, community intervention projects, a BIP ZIP uh, local intervention uh, project funded by the Lisbon City Council. Uh, it had no success because it's quite hard working here in the urban night. And we are trying to promote the Lisbon Nightlife Commission. It's uh, just a second. And uh, well, I have been encommended by the Lisbon City Council to create and implement the Lisbon Nightlife Commission as coordinator. And we, uh, we have presented our, our proposal, 70 pages proposal. And we, uh, well, it's, it's approved. It's orally, informally approved, but we are waiting uh, the final decision of the Lisbon City Council. So let's see. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Jordi. Okay, now we welcome Enrique, who is representing also Manuel and presenting their project, the Urban Audiovisual Festival. No. After Enrique finishes his presentation, we will have one more presentation uh, by Aida, and um, after that we will take a little bit to ask some questions if you guys have any and to have a small debate. Thank you. Olá, boa tarde a todos. Uh, preparei essa apresentação em português e vai ser muito curta também, é só para apresentar um festival que teve essa primeira edição esse ano, que pretendemos continuar para anos futuros. Um, esse festival, o Urbano Audiovisual Festival, surgiu Uh, nas primeiras reuniões da TCUP, uh, entre eu e o Manuel, e surgiu então como um, um filho que foi parido pela TCUP, e depois avança sozinho e ganha as suas próprias pernas e, e torna-se um festival uh, uh, autônomo, que agora é o AF. Uh, quando fizemos o festival, pensamos que poderia ser um festival um, que projetasse projetos audiovisuais um, um, com o Carizo tivesse como objetivo a questão urbana, a questão da cidade, a questão que estivessem associada àquilo uh, em que nós estávamos mais, mais próximos a trabalhar. Nesse sentido, um, criamos um festival que, querendo ser acadêmico no seu objetivo de atrair uh, projetos audiovisuais de Carizo Acadêmico, também tinha como objetivo chegar a um contexto e levar as comunidades locais para discutir os filmes que íamos passar. Um, e assim, o primeiro, o primeiro festival que aconteceu no fim de semana iniciou com uma chamada de projetos com esse tema do urbano conflito, o conflito urbano. Um, e uh, uma coisa interessante a partir desse, desse tema é que grande parte dos filmes que nós recebemos nessa edição tinham como os grandes temas assim, centrais, a partir deste, a questão da habitação, a questão do turismo e a questão da gentrificação. Um, Basicamente, nós estávamos a pensar que poderia ser um tema muito abrangente, que pudesse ver muitas coisas que não estivessem associadas à questão do conflito, nessas, nessas três questões. Por exemplo, um, o conflito de tráfico, o conflito das drogas, nessa linha. E, por acaso, eu acho que não só por acaso, mas que um bocado que aquilo que a academia tem produzido também tem um bocado essas questões, os grandes filmes que nós, grande parte dos filmes que nós recebemos foi nessa linha. Recebemos várias dezenas de filmes, de projetos audiovisuais nessa edição e com uma comissão científica, uh, que eu posso mostrar aqui, uh, que nós tínhamos, e fomos escolhidos dez projetos. Uh, essa edição aconteceu uh, na Biblioteca de uma Vila, um, que foi um, um, um espaço muito bom para essa edição, porque, sendo o um contexto que é, sendo um, um contexto que, simultaneamente, já passava por vários processos uh, novos, em gentrificação na parte, na parte de baixo, problemas ainda por resolver na parte de cima da linha do comboio, as duas linhas do comboio, a biblioteca está ali naquela parte de cima e é um espaço com muito potencial e eu acho que foi importante um, que houvesse essa edição em uma vila. Uh, nessa edição, uh, começamos um, com, dez, com dez projetos, como já tinha dito, com, divididos em várias sessões, e a primeira, a primeira sessão foi uma sessão de discussão, sem projetos de visual nenhum, foi mais uma questão de debate e conversa com várias pessoas de vários movimentos sociais, 
para discutir questões da cidade, por exemplo, a questão do racismo, a questão do feminismo, a questão da habitação, uh, por in, uh, a, questão, a questão da comunidade cigana. Uh, a ideia é que fosse um debate mais aberto possível, com mais com maior presença possível de vários movimentos sociais no início. E depois, no, no sábado e domingo, antes de começar de subo, nesse fim de semana passado, foi uh, sessões direcionadas por símbolos. Só que nessas sessões, uh, contrariamente aos vários festivais que acontecem na cidade de Lisboa, cada sessão era discutida uh, em simultâneo, acadêmicos, ou, e não só, uh, sobre o que os filmes estávamos a ver. E depois também havia a possibilidade de estar em discutir com próprios realizadores, que vários, vários que estiveram presentes, ou por videoconferência. Uh, então, a nossa ideia é que não é só passar o filme e deixar e irmos embora, é promover a discussão e, a partir daqui, criar redes e trabalhos na área do, do audiovisual, na questão da, das questões urbanas. Uh, mais sobre questões do futuro. A UAV, uh, sentimos que há uma vontade, queremos continuar uh, depois dessa primeira edição, e então, neste momento, estamos a pensar já uma segunda edição, apesar que acabou há um dia ou dois, então já estamos a dominar o assunto. E o tema que inicial que já estamos a lançar, e já fizemos esse lançamento oficial lá, lá no, em uma vila, mas o tema inicial por, por, que vai ser pensado para o próximo ano vai ser mobilidade urbana e transportes. E, trans, e a nossa ideia é... <risos> a Rita gosta muito desse tema da de mobilidade urbana. <risos> mas a questão do, da mobilidade urbana e dos transportes... Um, agora esqueci o que ia dizer. <risos> mas... Um, nosso projeto é que cada, cada edição que fomos realizando se entrasse num tema específico, como já foi do conflito urbano, agora mudar do urbano em transportes e assim por diante. Há outras questões que estão surgindo para se fazermos uma rede de festivais ou festival fora do país, em Itália. Portanto, há aqui várias coisas que estão surgindo no futuro para dar continuidade a isso, que eu acho que em Lisboa está cheio de atividade cultural, está cheio de festivais. Se forem reparar, só nesse mês havia para quatro festivais ligados ao cinema argentino, de motards, de futebol, os temas não faltam, só que é preciso também discutir a cidade, acho que a questão do, do cinema pode ser um bom motivo para começarmos a fazer essa discussão, como estamos a ver aqui, vários projetos estão surgindo nesse sentido, discutir a cidade, que cidade que queremos e como é que vamos para frente com a cidade que temos. É isso. Obrigado. Thank you, Enrique, for this very brief uh, introduction to WAF. And now we welcome Aida to present um, a project called La Brua. Sorry for that, that uh, I'm used to a MacBook and then uh, it's easy to open several images at the same time. <laughs> and uh, I was invited today to give a talk about the La Berroa, so I didn't have time to prepare a proper presentation, but then I want to separate some images to show you. I think I will start to talk uh, 
even though we are trying to fix things it's better, then we don't uh, delay a lot. I'm not used to talk about the Lab Rua in English, so I uh, appreciate you understand my translation because I will try to speak in English anyway. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Manuel and, and Carolina for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here speaking about the Lab Rua. For those that cannot understand Portuguese, Rua means the street. And this name is because the street is the main uh, point of connection between people and buildings. So it's the main public space where we can find everywhere in any city. That's why we use the name La Bihua. And uh, yes, perfect, thank you. The La Bihua started in 2015. I'm a professor from a private university called Unifacisa in the northeast of uh, Brazil. It's a small town for us, 400,000 inhabitants. And uh, uh, it started with a project from the university, although I, be I began with this project and then we decided to do it independent of the university. So I think the difference between all the groups here and the Lab Rua is because we are independent group. And um, so we started in the backyard of a friend uh, architectural office. He borrowed us the place and then we want just a place to be together and try to work and do some stuff. And everything is very handmade and do it yourself and because we have this um, idea of intervention very strong in, in, with us. Afterwards, we moved to my house. Uh, I'm, it's a uh, video. That's it. It's not going to work. No. I'll try to open the video because it's very interesting that you can see the idea of the how it works, the lab. Yeah. Uh, because we have all, I'm an architect and town planner, and uh, most of the people that work with me, uh, with us, is uh, also from architecture and town planning. But there are some people from geography, history, comp uh, informatics, and um, we try to do this collaborative thing. And uh, yeah, you can I just talk along. And um, so we have this place, that's my house, and we have this idea of talking about mobility, talking about cities, right to the city, which city we want. And uh, we love to be in this house because there's this relationship with the street, which is not common in Brazil. Uh, we have the eyes of the street and uh, we, have, we like this relationship uh, that we have the, between the house and the outside. And uh, that's the place we, you can see like people are working, discussing something and there's coffee at the same time. It's kind of messy, but we do like very much this environment. Where is the, yes, here. And also we have a backyard and uh, because our main goal is to do, it, it was to do only research and uh, I will show a bit of our research, but we start to feel this um, need to go out, to go to the street, literally. And uh, so we, we also have this backyard where we do uh, meetings, and uh, we also do some uh, uh, cine lab, cinema, that we do discuss uh, city and the public space in these um, movie sections, that's once a month. And we also do another uh, kind of talk called uh, Janela, which is window in English. That's also the idea of bringing uh, talks about anything that's related to the public space. Like we had talks about the use of bicycle being women and uh, using the bicycle and how to draw buildings that are better to the cities. And also there's a big party uh, uh, that's called São João in the city and we made also talk about it because it's a very touristic thing and they're like privatizing all the, the party. So we try to bring these talks about, about the city. And uh, yeah, so this is the place. And this, these are some of the cities we already work with. Uh, most of them are smaller than Campina Grande. A lot of the cities we work is like 20,000 inhabitants. And uh, nowadays we have five, uh, five, five, yes, five uh, groups studying. These are most public space from Campina Grande and Esperança. There are two different cities. 
and also different places in Campina Grande. And there's also this, the third one, second and third, that's the San Juan. It's uh, this party I mentioned, and tomorrow we will uh, uh, present some results of this study. And also the fifth one uh, is the empty space, the urban voids of the, the city center. We studied it also, and we will present it tomorrow. And uh, there are other things that we do in the street, that, as we say, that's a, a picture just to show you that's a marathon of projects. We go to, to a small town and we pass uh, four days, sometimes a week, researching this, this city and also proposing different urban design for some places, like just the ideas because we don't have enough, enough time for that. But then we do get people together to, to, to think, to discuss about the city. This is another uh, um, event that we participated and there were some people that were not from Campina Grande and we draw this col collaborative map. We did people to walk uh, around the city and they draw their, their impressions. So it was another thing that uh, we, we did. This is, was two weeks ago. There's a, uh, an old cinema that uh, the city center, the, the council is trying to, to build a project that we don't agree with the process. So we did uh, intervention the whole day, asking people what they think about the project. And this is our house, and uh, this thing of going out and uh, trying to occupy the, the street, occupy the pub space, is also in our, this is our uh, Christmas, Christmas party, like the end of the year party, and uh, we also do our São João, that's a big, big thing in Campina Grande, is this, uh, is this time is, is happening right now, it's 30 days of party and then it's very strong there and we do it in, the, our, in, in the streets. So we do dance in the street and uh, I, for those that don't know Brazil, it's like the street is something that people say it's, you should avoid, you should not go to the street because it's unsafe and uh, we try to break this idea and say no, let's go to the street, if we occupy the street then we'll be safer. Yeah, that's another thing. And I want to finish because the lab who started also with another group of people uh, that use the bicycle as a transport mode. And we created the, this, uh, in Portuguese, is uh, the bar and bike that we go using the bikes to bar, different bars. And we try to bring people to use the street using the bicycle, showing them that was uh, safe and it can, can be fun, it can be also nice and not only like, a, I, we didn't want to, to do a critical mass, it was more like let's have fun using the bike and you can see how easy it, it is to, to ride on the city. How did you do that, open with movies? No. It's a very short movie just to show that, yes, it's a pity that's some music in this one but uh, we just go We just go around like uh, using the bikes and uh, listen to music. And uh, I think I did the, 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 the wrong, this is the wrong video. No, I forget, but it's the wrong one. I put the wrong one. But we, sometimes we are like 60 people just going around the city using the bikes and uh, like stopping in the bars and like people are like having their drinks and see the 60 bikes arriving. What the hell are they doing? They're just cycling, just coming to the bar to have a beer. And then we start to discuss the city and was, this was the beginning of the La Bihua. And uh, it's okay. We do have uh, a website that we just launched and uh, you, you can find us there. And uh, you can also find some methodology that we work uh, in, our, in our research. And uh, it's in Portuguese, but I think the Google Translator is quite good nowadays and you can understand everything. And if you have more questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aida. OK, so now we have a few minutes for a debate. If anybody has uh, questions for our presenters. No. Well, I have a question. Uh, I would like to know what is your opinion on what's on the horizon and what are the upcoming challenges for an area like urban studies or for a dis discipline like urban studies, which is ultimately not dis disciplinable. <laughs> 
It's for everyone, so <laughs> if, you, if anyone wants to answer. <laughs> Do you have an opinion, Aida? Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I will speak from a very particular point of view of a Brazilian and how uh, participation in, Bra in Brazil is not, not yet uh, strong, I would say. So I think uh, we should, when, when I think about talking about cities, talking about urban studies, talking about urban life, I still see we are talking among us. We are not going outside. In Brazil, people don't, are not aware about what a city should be. And uh, again, it's a very uh, specific perspective from Brazil. So when, for example, when, when we say, maybe for us, for this audience, when we say, oh, we should put more bicycle lanes, uh, should pro like save people to cycle more. For us, it's just, okay, this is normal. But when you say that in Brazil, it's like, but what are you, why is wanting with that? No, the cars, now, now we can buy some cars while we're t telling us not, that you cannot uh, have a car. So I think these two things, I think we should talk among, I, I, I'm really happy with this table that there are not only architects and town planning talking about the cities and the urban studies. This is not common in Brazil at least. I think we should uh, go more also when we think about uh, housing and all these uh, uh, issues we have, especially in, uh, in countries that are poor than Europe. Uh, I think like talking to people and talking to people that are on the bottom, it's an issue that we should still look forward to solve. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wanted to answer? Uh, completely agree, but I, I think the, the other <coughs> great uh, challenge for our studies is, um, is to decolonize the knowledge. I mean, when in urban studies, many scholars from Anglophone countries talks about uh, the global south. They often apply um, concepts like gentrification or class, gender, race, space, time, sociability, even generation that are built in Western uh, scenarios. So we have a problem because we are applying concepts that have been built in for and in Western scenarios and we're applying to non-Western scenarios. So in many cases, uh, many works that, uh, that have been recently published by many colleagues from Anglophone countries, but focusing in non-Anglophone countries, uh, clashes with the reality. And this uh, is a big challenge, especially for non-Western academics, you know, people working there in or Brazil or Africa or Asia or whatever, but in non-Western countries is to create new concepts, to go beyond the state of the art, not refry, 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 and refry bibliographical uh, reference, you know, that when we have to, to publish in a AIS index a journal or whatever, uh, you have to, to, uh, to, uh, to quote again, uh, well, uh, Neil Smith, the Billy, and whatever. No, okay, well, come on. We young, I know young, I know my forty, <laughs> but uh, me now. But uh, I, I would like that young researchers uh, have the, um, the, the, the energy, the force to go beyond, to break our epistemological field. We have to break, the, because the world is not only UK and New York and uh, San Francisco. Well, that's, and maybe that's, that's uh, the big challenge, to decolonize the knowledge, especially from non-Western uh, countries. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, I would follow uh, a little bit uh, the line of Jordi. I think he, this is it. Uh, the decentralization of uh, the ah, okay no problem no problem at all actually okay, no problem at all. Uh, I think this this thing of decentralization you know decentral decentralizing decentralizing uh, knowledge I think it's really important for me for from my perspective, I'm here representing the collective, but I think we don't have this really clear uh, 
as a group, but this is what it means for me, uh, urban studies, is this, uh, because participation has limits. Uh, people have limits to participate uh, nowadays because our uh, day to day life, it's really uh, busy and uh, with a lot of pre preoccupations and I think one of the possibilities of the academic work is to give people, uh, to give uh, people a voice, uh, a competent and organized voice uh, concerns. And that's what, what I see in <coughs> urban studies possibilities, is the inter interdisciplinarity work and this organized voice of the day-to-day um, uh, -day life. This is what I see um, as some, some field of work, a possibility uh, of a field of work. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Irina. Um, vou ter que falar em português, o que é mais fácil para mim. Eu acho que concordo muito com o que estás a dizer. E uh, eu ia dizer uma coisa no meu sentido, que é, não é só para, para estudos urbanos, na minha opinião, é para a academia no ensino geral, sobretudo nas ciências sociais e humanas, é trabalhar com as pessoas. Um, eu acho que o Brasil, em certa medida, atropassou um bocado já isto, uh, em alguns contextos, mas sinto que cá, um, às vezes, pelas vezes que eu conheço, sendo brasileiro também, Sendo que cá eu sinto que muitas vezes a academia está fechada e só se preocupa em falar com as pessoas quando o objeto é são aquelas pessoas, um, mas no um dia a dia trabalha muito pouco com as pessoas fora da academia e sinto que, e, e falo também de experiência própria e tudo, sinto que falta esse sentimento de trabalhar para fora, de realmente trabalhar com as pessoas e não para as pessoas. Um, eu acho que que é esse um dos desafios e nos estudos urbanos, sobretudo, tendo em conta que o objetivo que tem em trabalhar questões urbanas é aí que também se coloca de forma primordial esse, esse objetivo. So, for those of you who couldn't understand, Enrique, I'll just summarize. Basically, you agree that you think for not just urban studies, but for all social sciences, that we should reframe our thinking around people's needs and not just using people as objects to attain a certain goal. Is that it? Thank you. Okay. Um, only to, I don't know if I'm adding something. I'm, I agree with all of you. I guess for a very vast question, I have a very vast answer. And mm -hmm. uh, so urban studies uh, problems goes along with scientific research problems. And uh, uh, I agree with the fact that we have to be more closer to the people we study with and uh, don't, not being afraid of our ideas and being more compromised about social issues because sometimes we don't have that um, in our minds we just have to follow uh, a lot of things in the university in the university so uh, that said i guess that the the issue is that we have to be more free in our way of uh, working because there's a lot of constrangements in the universities nowadays um, that's it. Thank you. So, yes, this is a very ambitious question, so I don't know if I uh, really don't have uh, a question. What, what is the challenge or what is the future? But maybe for me at this point, one of the challenges... This works. Yes. One of the challenges, I think, is... Uh, sorry. Uh, to have more like you said and you said, more voices also uh, in the research we do. I think we should not be afraid uh, of being researchers, academics, and also activists, and of having a, another standpoint that not only this scientific standpoint. So I think we should really not be afraid of this. And also I think that we should have or pursue uh, feminist view on the city also and on the urban studies and having this uh, for these are my challenges for the future so <laughs> I'm sharing them with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one question now. Great. Go ahead. We will have virtually two minutes to two, three um, minutes. 
uh, first of all, thank you all. Uh, my, my, my question is, is picking a bit on what Carolina said on the challenges of urban studies because I think it applies to the challenges of all social sciences. Because it's, if, it's can, if it can be a science at all, if it can follow the same concept of science that you have like in biology or physics or so, for a very simple reason, because what the object of the social sciences are objects that are not describable by facts. What do I mean by this? It's like if you pick on uh, Labrua La and you describe the causal effects between the objects only through a, a factual description, you won't have the description of the experience that is being experienced. You only have the material layer of, the, of, of what is happening. So you need another kind of, of, of discourse, you need another kind of, of method to exactly approach what makes all those ca casual relations between matter make something different than another one in another location that has almost the same properties as that one. And so my question to you all would be like, if you agree that it can be a, 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 a science or if it's more close to a, a humanities study, because I think this, it may sound like a, an umbrella that it just covers all, but I think this kind of concept analysis allows us to maybe not be chasing something that we will never achieve, like a truth value function for something in urban studies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anybody want to attempt at responding to <laughs> this question? Uh, I don't know if I can answer you, but I guess urban studies is a science as another science in the humanities and social sciences. And we just have to follow the same uh, requisites that we follow in other sciences to make an empirical research uh, and then to, to go back to our theoretical framework and do our analysis, it's science. I don't know, I, I, I can't understand why it couldn't be science. I understand that it's difficult to make a science that it is in its essence uh, very interdisciplinary and I guess that's one of the challenges but I guess that's good because epistemologically it's good to to try to dialogue between sciences. It's very difficult because when you want to publish once you, you are interdisciplinary uh, if you have an inter interdisciplinary work, if you want to, pl to, to publish, it's very difficult because uh, journals are very scientific and uh, very disciplinary. Uh, so I guess it's a, it's a, uh, it can, 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 be a, uh, can be a good thing to science to, uh, to break, to break this, uh, these walls. And I guess urban studies have a say in that, in that, that case. <laughs> but can I can I just ask you maybe if we would like to continue this conversation outside for a little bit so we can close maybe. the session? Yeah, yes, sure, sure, sure. because that was a very great answer, and I think it's good to um, terminate our session in time. It's 8 p.m. and we are all hungry, and we all all want to go have dinner, or some of us. Uh, so I would thank you very much for your attendance to this open session, and we'll restart tomorrow at nine or maybe w some of you will still join the others at the Fado night, and others will join us tomorrow morning with Alan Bourdin. Thank you very much. <laughs>